This is in no way my attempt to justify my comic book obsession. And this story, I really, really like. Artwork, the storytelling. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Pull List, your YouTube source for all things comic book. My name is Travis, let's talk about Spider-Man. It's no secret that Spider-Man is one of the biggest superhero icons of all time, and it's also no secret that I am a huge Spider-Man fan. I have a lot of Spider-Man comics, long boxes and long boxes full of just Spider-Man, including issue number 149 where he fights his clone for the first time. I have the first appearance of his black suit and the other first appearance of his black suit. And I also have this. Spider-Man vs. the Hulk at the Winter Olympics from 1980. Tell me you've seen this before, because I had never seen it before I bought it. I even have an issue of 666 signed by the man himself, Stan Lee. You see it right there? Excelsior. But all of these pale in comparison of value to the Spider-Man comics that we're going to talk about today. The top 10 most valuable Spider-Man comics ever of all time, which is a really long title. I'm probably gonna trim that down. Bear in mind that these values can fluctuate wildly if these comics are professionally graded and sealed, etc. Coming in at number 10, Amazing Spider-Man number 40. This issue graded 9.8 recently sold at auction for $4,000. This issue shows the origin of Spider-Man's arch nemesis, the Green Goblin, and shows why exactly he went around dressing up like a goblin and throwing bombs at people. It's a pretty key issue. Number nine is Amazing Spider-Man number 129, the first appearance of the Punisher. Recent auctions of near mint copies of this issue have ended between five and six thousand dollars. And what makes this issue so special? Well, it's the first appearance ever of the Punisher. The Punisher gained such a cult following from this issue that he got his own comic book down the road. He kind of steered comics towards a more gritty, dark kind of thing rather than happy-go-lucky whatnot, he brought like a realness to the comics. He carried a gun and went around shooting bad guys as a vigilante. It's kind of dark. It's a sort of grittiness that comics hadn't had before. Number eight is Amazing Spider-Man number four, a recent mint copy of this issue sold for around $5,000. This issue features the first appearance of the Sandman, and if you're keeping score, first appearances of major villains or heroes usually mean more money. At number seven and number six, we have Amazing Spider-Man number three and Amazing Spider-Man number six. These two feature the first appearances of two of Spider-Man's biggest villains, Dr. Octopus and the Lizard. If they're in near mint condition, these issues can bring about $6,000 each. Number five is The Amazing Spider-Man number 300, a CGC 9.9 .9 mint issue of this comic sold for over $6,100 recently. Now what makes this issue so special? It's Spider-Man's first all-out battle with Venom. He sort of appeared at the very, very end of issue 299, but issue 300 is the full-out attack. Also, it features art by Todd McFarlane, which if you're a Spider-Man fan or a Todd McFarlane fan, you know that that's good news. I don't know anyone who knows about Todd McFarlane and dislikes what he does. He's pretty amazing. At number four, we have The Amazing Spider-Man number two. This is one of those cases where the number two issue of a comic is still worth a lot. Unsurprisingly, the first few issues of Amazing Spider-Man are all worth a ton of cash, but this is the first appearance of the Vulture. Not gonna lie, the Vulture is kind of ridiculous, but again, it's number two of The Amazing Spider-Man, and that means value. Recent auctions of very good condition copies of this issue have ended around $8,000. Number three is The Amazing Spider-Man number 39. Now, this is where the waters get kind of murky, because you think that the first five issues are all going to be in the top ten just because they're the first five issues of The Amazing Spider-Man. But this issue features the Green Goblin. It's not even the first appearance of the Green Goblin, but it's where he is unmasked. And after two years of being tormented, Peter finds out who the Green Goblin is. A recent auction placed a mint copy of this at $15,000. Coming in at number two is Amazing Spider-Man number one. Very rarely do big superheroes ever appear in their own comic first. Creators usually introduce them in a very safe environment so that they just don't tank and burn. They thought that Spider-Man was just gonna be a flash in the pan sort of thing. Ha! A near mint copy of this issue can go for around $40,000. That's a lot of money. And now we are to number one, and if you know anything about Spider-Man or comics in general, you know which one this is. Amazing Fantasy number 15, released in August of 1962. It's a very iconic image of Spider-Man swinging along, and you can notice that Spider-Man's costume hasn't really changed too much over the years, from 1962. What's funny about the Amazing Fantasy series is that this was number 15, and in like 12, 13, 14, they knew that the issue was probably going to get cancelled. Spider-Man was just the throne out there. Who knew that the character would be this popular 50 years later? In an auction in 2011, a graded copy of this issue sold for 1.1 million dollars. 
More recently, a very beat up copy of this issue sold for $20,000. So, there you go. And also, Amazing Fantasy number 14, the issue right before this one, you can get for the low price of 20 bucks. <laughs> so how do some of these comics fetch such huge amounts of money? The rarity, marketability, and of course, condition. A rusty staple or a little crease on a page can drastically bring you down hundreds or thousands of dollars depending on what the comic is. First appearances of heroes, first appearances of villains, deaths of heroes or villains, reveals of heroes or villains. These are all key ingredients to creating a very sought after comic book. Thank you for fueling my comic book obsession. In the comments down below, leave me the name of your favorite hero or anti-hero and tell me why and you will see me tomorrow. Hmm, why did my hands do that? I don't, uh, okay. Bye. First appearances of heroes, first appearances of villains, deaths of heroes or villains, reveals of heroes or villains, these are all the ingredients chosen to create the perfect comic book. But Professor, I'm... Um, <laughs>